I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 7 in my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. This video addresses the middle plug, that's a super strike zigzag, also known as a darter. Alright, this is the second of two darter videos. Uh, the first one I shot uh, in a channel with a lot of current, and uh, the second one is going to be out on the open beach. So, in both cases, uh, Something that's really important about darters is you need some water pressure on the lip to get the plug to swim properly. And that uh, water pressure can come either from current or something like uh, you know, wave sweep, wave movement. And uh, in this case, out on the open beach, that's what we've got. Got a little push of wind, so it's, it's moving the water, getting a little bit of a sweep in there, and that's enough to get the darter going. So we're going to address uh, fishing the flat beach with darters in this video. The first part of this video is shot in daylight, uh, just to give you a decent look of what's going on. Uh, the second part is going to be shot at night, and I strongly encourage you to hang in there and, and get to that because that's the most educational part of this video. Now, daughters are superb night plugs, and for any striped bass surf caster, uh, a daughter is a very important tool in the bag. They are not very good daytime producers at all. I catch very few fish on daughters during the day. Um, you won't see any big fish in this video. I was just happy to have enough fish around that uh, I could get some to hit daughters uh, just basically to shoot this video. You see the fast cranks there? That's to dig that plug in. It's very important with daughters is when that thing hits the water, you want to take a couple of fast cranks and dig it in and get it working. Then you back down on the retrieve speed a little bit and you, pretty much what you're trying to do is maintain pressure on that plug, stay in contact with the plug and use either the current or the wave sweep or whatever um, to, to get that plug working. Okay, the rod is a nine foot medium action custom lama glass graphite. Uh, the reel is a Penn 6500 SSV bailless, the line 30 pound test spider wire stealth braid at the end of the braid. It's about a three foot liter, 50 pound test fluorocarbon, a Tsunami Centro swivel uh, between the braid and the leader and then a tactical angler's clip uh, that the plug is attached to. Again, take notice of the very fast cranks made at the beginning of the cast to dig the plug in, then to back off on the retrieve speed. And in this case, where you're dealing with waves, uh, the retrieve speed is not uh, a steady speed because when the plug is being pushed by a wave, you want to pick up the retrieve speed a little bit. When uh, the plug is being dragged into a wave, you want to back down on the retrieve speed. And you know, it's not really the speed of the plug over the bottom, it's the speed of the plug in relation to the water around it that's important. We're almost to the night part of this video. If you have not watched uh, the previous video that I posted dealing with fishing the daughter in the current, uh, I strongly encourage you to watch that because uh, that gives a real good look at fishing a daughter in moving water. Okay, this is what daughter fishing really looks like. Uh, it's a night game. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing out onto a sandbar. I've got white water coming across the bar so that those waves breaking across the bar give me the water movement that I need to put action on the plug. You can see dragging this plug through the water. Boy, if you drag a daughter through calm water, uh, it, it doesn't look very good at all. But if you, you know, get it moving a little bit, dig it in, um, you know, that, that will get it going and it's very productive. This first quick segment is just to see this, just to see the, the retrieve cranking fast, backing down on the retrieve speed. Um, it's a fairly slow s retrieve because I've got a lot of wave sweep coming across the bar. And uh, that's enough to get this plug working. And I'm going to hook up here, but uh, I'm not going to show the fight because I don't have a good camera angle on the rod. All right, now I'm going to get into what I think is the most educational part of this video, and that's the effect of lights shining on the water with striped bass fishing. All right, first a little bit of background. Uh, what you're seeing here is actually the first video that I got catching fish on daughters. And I tried to get video during the day, but was not successful. So I decided, all right, uh, I'm going to have to do it at night. So I was in a situation where I was fishing uh, a really deserted stretch of beach late at night. 
and you know, I wasn't using my lights, and, and I was catching very well on the daughter. And they weren't big fish, mostly schoolies, but a couple of teen fish. And with the bite going very strong, I said, all right, this is my opportunity. I'm going to set my light uh, rig up and uh, you know, try to get some night video catching these fish on daughters. So after about an hour of a really solid bite with no light on, just in the dark, uh, I put the light on, and uh, at first I started doing okay. I ended up with about, I think I had four fish on my first five casts, but I noticed they were smaller than the ones I was catching in the dark. Uh, and then after those first four fish, uh, the bite shut down. So at that point, um, I, I turned my light off. And this is what it looks like uh, when I normally fish. I use a very small, like a, a pen light, a mighty light actually, with a red lens. I'm trying very hard to not throw light on the water and I'm turning away from the water. And that's what it looks like. I'm throwing off very little light. So after the bite shut down, I turned off my main light because I only have about 40 minutes of battery life. So I turned it off. And after about 10 minutes or so, uh, the bite picked up and, and it started accelerating and it got to the point it was almost every cast again. So I turned the light back on to try to get more video and they stopped hitting and I went through a couple iterations of this where I'd get the bite going in the dark, I'd turn on the light, the fish would shut off. Um, so you know that's the way the, you know, the night ended. I you know finally burned out my battery and that was it. Um, I come back the next night, I've got the bite going again in the dark, I put the light on and for the life of me, I must have gone through seven times of trying to uh, catch fish with the light and I simply could not catch fish with the light. I had no trouble catching them in the dark. Uh, it was very interesting. Now as far back as I can remember, surf casters, many of them, uh, can get very upset if you shine lights across the water. You know, there's been this perception that, um, you know, shining lights over the water will shut down the bite. And I certainly proved it to myself over those two nights that uh, it was actually way worse than I ever would have thought because I'm making pretty long casts with the darter and still I'm shutting the bite down with simply a head lantern. And it's a pretty bright head lantern, but I'm sure it doesn't compare to you know anything on a vehicle on a on a truck. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that you should drive your truck along the beach at night without your lights on. Certainly, that's dangerous, but it certainly makes a lot of sense to you know be sure not to sweep your headlights across the water if you're driving on the beach. In the same way, if you're fishing with a head lantern. You know, turn away from the water when you unhook a fish or change lures or whatever. And I said head lantern, but you know it could be any kind of light. Just try to avoid uh, needlessly shining light across the water, certainly for striped bass fishing anyway. One of the trickier parts of me fishing with the light on was that it uh, killed my night vision and I couldn't read the white water on the bar. but. Uh, I can tell you what I was doing was I was casting over the white water where I could see that white water breaking and uh, you know, just running it pretty much where the wave was breaking, uh, where there was like maximum water movement and uh, the fish were stacking up there and at least when the lights were off. So, okay, I hope you've uh, found this video useful and if you enjoy these videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel.